There are currently over 70 live match videos right here on this channel. I've been getting asked recently which I think are my favourites. So for various different reasons, I've put together my top five live match videos. Well, number five for me has to be a Boston Masters qualifier. Right, it's a couple of minutes before kickoff. Um, just up draw peg 17. Good area. There's fish crashing out there, so we're going to get a few today. Fishing at 65 metres to start with. Just so I've got room to go further than that. The wind's getting up a little bit. Um, four metre horizon rod. 5,500 reel. Six pound car bass to main line with a 12 pound shot leader. Just see how it goes. Got a cage feed in case that doesn't work. Um, so we'll see how it goes. That actual qualifier goes back to January 2016 and it was only the second ever live match that I'd ever filmed. So as you can appreciate, the kind of quality and style of the video is slightly different from what you might be used to seeing right now. Um, it was a match that, it was a, a Boston Masters qualifier. I went down there with my good mate Martin Edis and we always enjoy going to Boston. And in that particular competition, all you need to do is win your 10 peg section and that will secure you um, a place in the final which takes place later on in the year. Now, ironically, I didn't realise that when I was looking at this video that this is probably the last time I actually ever drew in that area where I actually drew on the match, but I drew peg 17 and yeah, whilst it was a dull, dark day, there was still plenty of action. Well, one of the reasons why this match sticks in my mind so much is because it's probably one of the first times I've ever kind of um, or the first time it, it came across to me that you can actually chase fish out into open water during the winter months. This match was actually January and that's exactly what happened. I caught pretty early on or the first three or four casts I caught carp, albeit I had to sit and wait for them, but it proved that there were one or two fish there. But then as the match went on I just kind of worked my way out during the match um, and I just managed to stay in touch with the fish, you know, for the full session and, and that was kind of a lesson in winter carp fishing, certainly with a method feeder as well, so that's one of the reasons why I love that match. Um, I ended up winning the section, but I actually won the match as well with £145, which was unbelievable, you know, it's a testament to the venue for, for January anyway, so yeah, that, that was a match that really sticks in my mind. Well, number four for me has to be um, a summer match. It was on the Tidal River Trent, and it was a Feeder Masters qualifier. This is a, obviously a video that you can watch all the way through, but it, was, it sticks in my mind because it, we were going there knowing that it had just been flooded. There, you know, For probably two weeks prior to that actual competition, the river had literally been in the fields. We were thankful that the match went ahead, but it was a beautiful sunny day. I think I fished in my T-shirt all day. I drew at North Clifton, and yeah, to fish a flooded river like that in conditions that were very, very uncertain, it was it was great to uh, to see a bit of action. One of the reasons why I really love this video is because it was an occasion when by fishing quite negative not a lot was happening but all, what I actually did was throughout the course of the day obviously you're in changes and I kept changing hook baits and I finished up with a really positive hook bait on I think it was two worms on either a 10 or a 12 and I was fishing with a strong fish meal mix I think it was ringers dark and I was putting plenty of bait through as well just really nice positive fishing I was only fishing about 15 meters, not clipped up, so I could just crash the feeder in, um, feed loads of a bow out, just really nice confident fishing. And the fish responded to it, you know, I had some lovely bream and some nice big hybrids. 
that particular day I didn't win anything. You know, I, I was third in the zone to qualify in a feeder masters. You've got to win your 20 peg zone. I was actually third in the zone that day with 20 pound, but I beat the lads around me, but it was just nice that you can fish really nice and positive and get a response. And then when you are hooking um, hard fighting fish in fast flow, it's just great when, when you can hook them on proper gear. Well, number three for me was another day out with Martin Edis. It was actually a, a Larford Classic qualifier. Um, this was actually, it was February time, early February. It was just before the Larford Silverfish Festival. And I'm not sure if I'd already qualified for that classic or whether I just wasn't interested in it, but I was treating it as a complete throwaway match. I went down there with Martin. Martin was obviously going to go down there and try and qualify and just fish the open match as normal. But it was on Specy Lake. And with it being a week before the Silverfish Festival, I kind of used it as a throwaway match just to try and learn and find out and just be more up to speed on how the bream and the skimmers were actually feeding. And that's what I did. I just went there and I just fished for skimmers for the full five hours. Well, as you can see from the banks, it had been flooded, you know, the water level was really high and it was really interesting to see how I caught that day. I ended up with 23 skimmers and the majority of those fish came on that short line. Now that was the first time that I'd ever used lean there as well on that venue. And when I fed a short line, I fed a short line at about 15 meters and I, I used lean. That was about 50% of my mix. And it was incredible how that short line just got stronger and stronger and stronger. And even to this day, I think a lot of that was down to the lean that I used because I just think it was colouring the water up. And as the fish and the bream obviously came over that positively fed area, I think it just coloured up the water a little bit and just gave them a bit of confidence. And it was brilliant. Um, really nice session, surprising session to say there was so much extra water in. Um, I ended up third in the match. Um, I landed a, a carp about £14 just after time which didn't count but that would have won me the match but it was great to get such a good weight in harsh conditions and it obviously gave me a lot of confidence going in to that Silverfish Festival. Well number two for me is a match where I, I didn't win anything, I didn't even win the section, I think I just missed out on qualifying, it was a feeder masters qualifier and that was a, the beautiful Patsall Park. Well this match really stuck in my mind because it was a, a match where you really had to ring lots and lots of changes to try and keep fish going in the net. I drew in the deeps, um, peg 42 and you know I'd never fished those pegs before but I soon got an idea of how deep it was as soon as I got there. I got a bomb on and I got out there with a stopwatch just to see how deep it really was. It was a really interesting match in the sense that there were lots of fish there but there were lots of small fish that sort of size and when the feeder was taking so long to hit the bottom even on a relatively short range line which I think it was about 14 meters that I fished 
it was taking so long for the feeder to get to the bottom there were fish were even ragging the tip and taking the bait on the way down but like I said they were really small fish and they became a big problem for a lot of people and they were for me for a while but gradually just through ringing changes changing the hook pattern and the hook size and the hook bait the hook length by constantly ringing the changes I managed to find a way of hooking the fish and I ended up with a really nice mixed bag you know I did catch a lot of small fish a lot of roach and I kind of ended up fishing to just try and put anything in the net it was evident that the you know the big bream weren't really going to get their heads down in numbers so you just had to keep trying to put fish in the net like I said I didn't qualify that day but it was such a, a satisfying day in the sense that um, there were lots of fish there and there were a few people getting a little bit kind of uh, annoyed you know with missed bites and small fish being a problem um, but it was nice to work it out you know to catch a few fish I beat the lads around me which is always nice but I fished a nice fish meal mix I caught most of the fish on the short line, <clears throat> just under arming, and um, I think I could have caught shorter that day. I probably would have caught more, I think, if I'd fished shorter um, and in slightly shallower water, but it was a lovely sunny day all day, and I think that was a weekend away with Dad as well, so that made it a little bit even more enjoyable. Well, number one for me has to go right back to 2016 again, um, and it's back onto the River Trent. It was Home Marsh. I'd never fished there before. Home Marsh on the Trent is a stretch that a lot of you probably heard of, and probably remember from years and years ago when it was a lot more popular. That's where the big boom is that goes across the river. As it turns out, about a month or two months before this match, I did actually get to see that stretch there. Um, I was actually there covering the Division 1 National for a magazine and that's where it was reported the individual winner would come from so I was there to actually film and witness the weighing um, of the individual Division 1 National Champion that day as it turns out it was Rob Perkins now some of you might have seen this clip but here's a clip of his, uh, of his catch that day It looks like Rob's won this section, he's had 40 kilos. Just talk us through it quickly, Rob, if you can. Uh, just fish can bait feeder all day. Uh, 60 gram large, Aquex uh, cage feeder. Packed it with chop worm and caster. Right. Um, very little ground bait, just enough to bind it in. I've gone 55 turns, um, which I'd like to run a bit further, but obviously with this wind today, so when I went to this match, having seen what I'd seen from Rob, obviously a month or two months before, I was really raring to go. And when I drew peg four, I was a little bit kind of, not disappointed, but everybody told me that it, it wasn't the best peg in that section. This was a league match, and you actually rotate through the different sections, so that would basically mean that everybody in that league would get an opportunity to go to these hot pegs. I was told it was the third best peg in the section, but that really didn't mean a lot to me. But uh, Alan Henry and Wayne Bartholomew, who were also fishing the league, um, put me on the right track that day. I'd never fished there before, and they basically said to me that there, there'll probably be a shoal of bream there somewhere, usually slightly um, upstream from where I was. But on this day, I was obviously hoping they were going to be in front of me. And all I did was I had a really nice steady start. After 30 minutes, I got my first bream. Um, and then I got another bream after 50 minutes. And then on the hour, I hooked and landed a seven pound barbel. And I was fishing on braid that day. That's one of the reasons why it stuck in my mind. I'd uh, never fished with braid on the River Trent before. I wanted to try it. I know Alan Henry does it a lot. And I thought I was gonna give it a go that day. So uh, obviously when I hooked that barbel, that really tested my kit to its limits. Well, when it got to the halfway stage, I remember what Alan had said to me and Wayne, and, and I wanted to kind of dominate that area. Nobody was catching any fish, so it was just a couple of bream, and I decided to step everything up. I thought, I'm going to go for a big weight. If there are some there, if they're going to rock up, I want them to stay in front of me. So I stepped up to the largest dome feeder that I'd got. I ended up with a 50 gram version on, um, I think it was, 
because of the wind just to get to the middle of the river there wasn't that much flow to be fair but the weight was more about you know getting there because of the uh, the wind and i just started putting loads of feed in i started putting loads of casters in some dead maggots i, I was fishing a nice strong fish meal mix loads of particles and gradually i started to get a response and then the last two hours were fantastic you know it just caught bream steady steady away and um, yeah it was a really memorable match that i ended up with two keep nets in um, I ended up winning the match with 120 pound of bream, which, you know, I think the second weight in the section was about, th or in the match was about 30 pound. So I think, you know, just kind of banging that feed in, trying to just dominate and keep the fish there. I think it, that might have been, you know, the, the key turning point in that match. But Dad was with me as well, so that obviously made it more enjoyable. But no, it was a really memorable match that one, one that um, obviously it's going back to 2016. I wish I was back there now so I could film it in a slightly different way for you. But yeah, if you want to watch the full video to any of those top five that I've just told you about, they are all in the playlists. Thanks for the questions as regards to what my favourites were. I've got some more videos in this series for you. So I hope you've enjoyed this bit of an insight and a bit of a, a reflective look at some of the matches. Please give it a thumbs up if you'd like to see more videos like this and don't forget to hit subscribe and if you want to see more coaching tuition style videos then have a look at my other channel just there, Patreon TV. Thanks for watching, really appreciate it, please stay safe and I'll see you all in the next video.